Well, it is those, uh, one of such development that uh, hit the front burner today on Sunrise LED Port Harcourt, killing of those four University of Port Harcourt students. That's what we're focusing on this morning. We're joined now by Ankyo Briggs, who is a Magic Delta activist. Thank you for coming on this morning. Yes, thank you. Good Emancipation morning. skipped my mind. <laughs> All right, then. Well, it, it, it's so terrible. All sorts of phrases have been used to describe. I mean, national televisions um, can't afford to show that kind of those kind of images because it'd be traumatizing for lots of people to say the least. But looking at the way some of those transpired, I mean, yes, yeah, shocking. Uh, and then the least expected it from uh, Alu Ikwere community, and the fact that you saw people who just stood there and watched. Uh, one wonders so much going through different people's minds. But how have you? Uh, reacting to this, I mean, from what we have said? Um, I, of course. I mean, um, uh, the, uh, the incident was drawn to my attention by several phone calls I received, and it was sent to my, uh, to my BB. And um, I couldn't believe it. I was sick to my stomach, because here was a grown man pushing tires down the necks of children that are old enough to be his own. Children, I mean, some of them are the, the, at the age of my son, of my, of my children. I was horrified. But you see, this is the level of impunity in this country right now. The level of impunity with governance, the level of impunity with a, a lack of accountability, with corruption, with, uh, w there, there is no human decency anymore. Life means absolutely nothing. If not, how is it that in a community at about uh, before 8 o'clock in the morning, you could see young ladies, you could see the feet of young ladies, you could see young men, you could hear people people's voices die die burn him i mean i can't believe this this we have turned into flesh eating blood sucking and drinking uh, uh, a society and i blame this on government and the people, because if you're not appalled by this and it goes on where people are gang raped, where people are, are, are beaten up in broad daylight and everybody just goes about their, uh, their own business. It's even you can it's the same thing that is happening with what is happening with the flood that is ravaging the many parts of Nigeria today. And government and government officials are just pretending as if it's, 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 it's just something minimal that uh, we will get over it as soon as possible. That is not the truth. The reality is more horrifying than, than, than you and I can imagine. Well, I think uh, you're very conversant uh, with communities around uh, uh, the Niger Delta. For this particular community, for some Nigerians, they've never heard about uh, a Lu community. Mm -hmm. Perhaps, uh, I don't know if you've ever visited uh, that yes, community. Yes, I mean, our low community is more or less um, a bubbling community because the university is, is in is in Alo. And really in any community abroad or that in, in that, sorry, that is the University of Port Harcourt. Yes, you uh, Uniport. Um that's the, host the community. Y yes, that's a, that's a, Alo is around that that area. Um Alo is made up of People, human beings like, like you and I, I was horrified to hear that such a thing could happen in, in, uh, in, in such a community. I would never find myself driving into that community for any reason. I mean, uh, professors live in those areas, lecturers live in those areas. Uh, the uh, university teaching uh, hospital has been relocated near that area. So when you look at that, it's on the east-west road, right? It's off the east-west road. So it's not a, a, a community that is underexposed or not exposed um, at all, you know the uh, the uh, the man of war campus is is there. If we remember what man of war is set up at, uh, uh, for, where people go for uh, uh, physical training, people in uh, in uh, in, um, in in work in uh, in careers go for uh, physical training. So it's not as if they are uh, uh, barbarians, but of course now that is what it has turned out uh, to be. So the community must be held responsible. The leaders in those communities must bring out those people that perpetrated this. And I'm, I'm saying that the death penalty should be called for on this. Because how do you stand and murder four young men, other people's children? You murdered them in broad daylight. One, two, three, four. 
And it seemed that this thing was done by this one particular man that we saw in the, in, uh, in, in the video. In, yes, in the video. Because he seemed to be the leader. He seemed to be the one that was in charge. How do you wake up in, in a the morning? In a community like that, uh, uh, don't they have traditional ruler? This is what I'm saying. So <laughs> the traditional ruler should be held accountable. If it, these are his subjects. This thing was done in his community. Strangers will not come into a community and murder four people in that community. And that community will be quiet. And then you had women. I could hear the voices of women laughing. I could hear the voices of young men encouraging this to go on. And we have the police commissioner of River State should answer to, uh, it, 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 it's under his control, the DPO that controls our law. You know, because if we, if we don't ask people to account to us for the money that we're paying them, for, for the fact that they choose to join the police force, for the fact that they want to be police commissioners in particular states. This is their responsibility. And these killings must not go unpunished. The perpetrators must be found. I don't care if they run away, they must be found. It's very interesting that you have many layers of blame, but you seem to lay the book at the government stable. Yes. Why, why is that? Because it is the responsibility of government to secure life and property. When you send your children to school and they are living in community and government is collecting school fees on those children, they are responsible for law and order. They are responsible for our lives. And they should, government should be sued to kingdom come for the deaths of these children so that it never happens again. University students, undergraduates, youth coppers are killed every day in Nigeria, in the north, in the south, everywhere. These this, this children that we give birth to, we have turned them into, into things that you can just discard. You know, it is unacceptable. Some people say that jungle justice has been a part of our culture. Is that true? Well, obviously. And jungle looting, where people get away with impunity for looting the resources of the nation, where corruption is allowed to run riot. And people who are criminals are heroes of our society, instead of people who fight and resist criminals and, 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 and are not seen as heroes of our society. I think that is wrong. Government must take responsibility. I don't see how government does not want to take, if you don't take responsibility for this and produce answers to these parents, if tomorrow a younger brother of one of these ones begin to feel that he also is so embittered that he, he, he too can kill somebody. What do you now call him? You call him a criminal? Of course you don't. Because something has led to it. People have reactions for, uh, for, uh, for actions. Government is answerable to crimes that are committed. But what does this say about us uh, as society? Are we so focused, so much focused on getting the government to do the right things that we we'll forget to even introspect because the government didn't, didn't do this one. I mean, what is it about our sense of justice? It's, this, is, this, is what I, this is what I am saying. I said it right from the beginning, that I hold us responsible, the people. People stood around there and watched this thing as if it was a play that was playing out and that it was a funny play and that it was a comedy that, that, was, that was playing out. And that is why I say that the community should be held responsible. The leaders of those communities must be held. There are politicians that come from those communities. There must be. See, see what are we saying about ourselves? It, it is not enough that every now and again we're discussing these things on, on, on national television. What happens to the perpetrators? How do they get away? Why do we let them get away? How is it that we are discussing even that, where, uh, that people who murder people should be negotiated with, should be discussed with, should be appealed to? How is that possible? We must draw the line somewhere in things like this. We are responsible. We must make the demands on government. Otherwise, why do we have government? We must hold government. Who do we hold accountable if we don't hold government accountable?